morning. My name is Mr. Zondag. I'm here to start a devotion for today. Let us begin our chapel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our theme for this month of October is, what does it mean to be human? How many of you guys like surprises? There are good surprises. Your mom and dad just bought you a brand new truck. The truck that you always wanted. The truck that uh, you've been begging them for since you were 10 years old. Or maybe your parents one day hand you a brand new iPhone to replace the iPhone that's been broken. Screen's all cracked. Doesn't get good cell reception. Or maybe your boss at work calls you into his office and you get that feeling in your stomach like, oh no, what did I do now? And he tells you, you just got a promotion. Congratulations, more money, more pay, more responsibility. Those are all good surprises, right? Those are all surprises we would gladly take. On the other hand, there are some surprises that we may not want to take or we may not want to have. Boss calls you into the office and says, we're downsizing. Pack your stuff. It's time to go. Or you have that nice jelly donut and you're sitting on the corner of your desk, been sitting there for maybe a set, maybe two, been eyeing it up, take a bite out of it, find that it's custard filled instead of jelly filled. That's a bad surprise. Or, I don't know how many of you guys like scary movies. I'm not a big fan of scary movies. But, you know, your character, the movie character is walking around the corner, and all of a sudden, boo! And you jump. Surprises. There are good surprises in our lives, and there are bad surprises in our lives. Our passage today in Matthew, Jesus is starting his ministry. He's looking at um, standing on top of a mountain, Sermon on the Mount, talking, doing some preaching. People are walking by, curious, trying to figure out what's going on, who's this Jesus guy, what's he saying. Some cases, probably pretty surprising to them. Because as Jews, he's telling them the opposite of what they've been taught for years and years and years. And so Jesus is sitting and preaching and teaching. So Matthew 17, or Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the small, least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others according will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be great, will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Surprise! These people who are walking down the road, these people who are coming to, uh, through, these people who are wondering what this prophet is saying, hears, them tell, hears Jesus tell them that the Pharisees and Sadducees, now Pharisees and Sadducees have an interesting relationship when it comes to the Jewish culture. They're not only their spiritual religious leaders, but in some cases they're their political leaders too as well. And so when you look at who's the top of the top of Jewish society, that is your Pharisees and your Sadducees. And Jesus said, you have to be greater than them, better than them, to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's surprising to them. That's not what they've been taught for years and years. That is not what the Jewish leaders presented to them. There's a little shocking, a little surprise. Also in this passage, verse 17, it talks about how he has not come to abolish, but to fulfill. So you've got this guy standing on a mountain, preaching and teaching, saying that he is a fulfillment of all the prophecies. Surprise. You know, could you imagine one day going down, walking through Israel and, you know, coming up to a mountain, this gentleman says, I am the Savior. I'm here to save you. I'm here to fulfill the 
the, all the things that have been told to you. Surprise. So, these Jewish people, ourselves, Jesus is trying to reassure us that he does not want us to be surprised when it comes to our salvation. He does not want us to be unsure of where our salvation comes from. He does not want us walking through life wondering what or if we're going to be saved. He says in verse 17 and verse 20, he assures you that you have salvation. He assures you that there is no surprises for you after your life is over. You are going to heaven. Believe, be baptized, be saved. He does not want you to be surprised. He's not here to reinvent the wheel. He is not telling these Jewish people or us anything that is not written about in the, in the Old and New Testament. He is here to fulfill. He is here to follow through with His promise. When your time is ended, when your life is ended, He doesn't want it to be a surprise. He doesn't want you to be unsure. Our sinful nature tells us, question, tells us, question Jesus. Question His commands. Did He really say that? Does He really not want you to be surprised? You know, maybe you need to earn it. Maybe you need to work a little harder. Maybe you need to be a little more perfect. You know, that thought that you had, the decision that you made, all of those sins send you to hell. Jesus doesn't want you to question your salvation. He doesn't want you to be surprised. He wants to reassure you that you are going to heaven. Your sins have been paid for. No surprises. Every time I sit in one of these bleachers or in the pews at church, I always try to pull one thing out of the sermon or one thing out of the devotion. Something I can kind of reflect on for the day. Something that I kind of can, can apply. Maybe talk about my classes. Maybe talk about with my kids. You know, on the van rides or whatever it may be. Um, on the way home from church on Sunday. One of the things that I want you guys to take away that from this chapel is there are no surprises. When you die, you are going to heaven. That is the best type of surprise that you can have. That is the thing that you can put your faith in, your, your salvation in, that there will be no surprises. You can plan on your salvation. Because the mystery of a surprise in our salvation is gone. Jesus has taken that away. And that all that is left is the certainty of eternal life. We are going to sing hymns for uh, 747. There is a Redeemer. The words we put on the board.
let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming down, preaching, teaching, serving us, dying on the cross, living, rising, so that instead of being unsure of our salvation, and instead of having a surprise, we can be assured that our salvation has been won. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Any announcements? Going once.